All right, today we have a conversation with Mr. Dean Nelson, a.k.a. Fresh, a.k.a. the Instagram star known behind the draw cool shit hashtag, one of the originators, I believe, right? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Nelson, how are you this day? I'm doing quite well, and yourself? Um, I'm doing all right. It's been a very productive weekend. Of course, I'm glad to speak to you today. Yes, yes. The same on this behalf. All right. Thank you for taking your time out. As I can see in the background, you're working on a lot of things. I see Vegeta, Harley Quinn, what I guess is the back of the head of Cardi B. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So being that you're an artist who's up and coming, there's always the question of how did it all begin? So could you walk us through that? Um. Well, my journey began at the age of four when I was diagnosed with diabetes in St. Barnabas Hospital in which there was no entertainment or any type of TV or anything in the hospital room. So the nurse bought me a piece of paper and a pencil, and she said, use your imagination. Do what all the other kids do. And that's that's where the journey all started. <laughs> so pretty much just the nurse giving you a, pen, a pencil and paper, that's where it all began. Mm-hmm. Now, from there... How did it develop? Who did you, who exposed you to the type of art that inspired you in the background or to different kind of art interests you have? Well, what exposed me was I wanted to, I saw a lot of people throughout my lifetime that were greater artists and it made me want to challenge myself to see if I could reach those levels. And also throughout my childhood, my Aunt Deborah gave me the tools I needed. She saw that I had the talent, so she helped me expand along the way. She gave me Sharpies, pencils. She bought me the most expensive pens. I didn't know what I was doing. But she saw something in me that I didn't see myself. And taking note that it started off with a nurse with a pen and pencil, your Aunt Deborah, what made it eventually evolve into not just something to do, something that you admire other people's works in, but something you want to actually make a career of? What made me want to make more of a career out of it was that at some point I noticed, okay, I'm just, I'm too damn good. I, and I'm getting better. So I have to do something with this. And constantly hearing from people, yo, you need to do something with this. You could go places. Knowing that I could go places with something that I see just as a hobby that's what made me grow and made me expand and want to turn this into a profession. Seeing that other people could do it and knowing that I go further than anybody around me ever has, that's what's making me grow. And you mentioned your Aunt Deborah as a support. What about your father and mother? Because it's pretty much generalized that artists struggle when it comes to life. So were they on board with it or were they kind of like, eh? On my mother's side, it, it's it's heavy. My mother is a, a great artist herself, never really built on mine. I didn't find out later until all the, the women on my mother's side were great artists. My grandmother was highly into fashion, art, and designing. My, even my great-grandmother did a lot of stuff for Bloomingdale's. She would curate a lot of fashion and art. And apparently it's in the blood, but we, it was never talked about. So to see that I could do it, they was like, oh, oh, that's that's nothing. It runs in the family. I was like, oh, okay. Why do you think it wasn't yeah. talked about, though? Because, like, working with Bloomingdale's, that's a full-on career right there. That's not just, you know. Yeah, like, uh, a lot of stuff was done. And I didn't find out till I was, what, 18 years old that my great-grandmother did all these great things, even my grandmother. And my mother in high school, uh, Growing up in the, the, the 80s and the 70s, being in high school, she was highly into the graffiti art. The graffiti, the tagging, the slaps, all of that. And when they do it, they have the attitude that I have now. Oh, this is nothing. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, what you mean that's nothing? To, to see another artist is always amazing, but you judge yourself off the back. So they was like, yeah, this is... This is not, I'm like, that's not nothing. This is something you could have told me about. Well. And let's take note of what you usually put out there. There's stuff like Rick and Morty, like in the background we mentioned Vegeta and stuff like that. 
do you mostly produce that kind of stuff for commercial purposes because they have a built-in fan base or is it because when it comes to your original work it's still not at that point yet where you feel comfortable putting your your stuff that is purely from you out yet well i i solely create off of passion and emotion like i know a lot of art it's it's cheesy to say that artists have emotions but we do and that's what help us produce such great work and these are things from my childhood that put me through a lot of stuff and have helped me through a lot of stuff just thinking about it like vegeta his pride and courage the cowardly dog always being although he was scared he stood up for what he loved and who he loved so it's more of a, a personal emotional build in my pieces not for commercial it just so happens that everybody likes dope shit and that's why i draw cool shit <laughs> In relating to how artwork and inspiration and passion come into your work, how do you handle those periods where, like writers, there's just kind of a blockage? Do you just draw things, erase later, and edit, or is it just how do you work through all that? Well, it's, it's periods in time when I can't even, I'll be so frustrated I can't even pick up a pencil. I feel like I'm going to stab anybody around me with it. But to clear my head, I usually, I'll take a break to myself. I'll go outside if it's a beautiful day, just breathe in some air. Even if it's having a personal life, like getting out with friends, going out for a bite to eat, going to an amusement park. I'll go to the grocery store. I have my set snacks that help me clear my mind. And if I don't have these snacks while I'm creating, it's like, well, that's not right. So I have my, my go-tos, and it's just all about clearing your mind and keeping things positive. Okay. And taking note of the interest, intricacy of your work, what is your favorite medium? Is it drawing? Because with the way that you draw some things, I can't even imagine somebody doing that by hand. So is it mostly like working with an iPad or a stencil? Is it like pencils, markers, paintbrushes? What's your go-to right now? My go-to will always be markers because my process with like paper is I'll sketch it out and then I'll ink it in in color. I love doing that because inking, getting all the fine details in there is my favorite. I do dabble in a bit of everything from posters to painting to tattoos to sneaker art to canvases. It's, it's everything. But my go-to is definitely markers. And when it comes to art, it's one of those weird things where some people just have innate talent and other people build it up. So when it came to you learning how to draw and stuff like that, was that basically you just, like when, it, when you were four years old, just pencil, paper, I see this, I'm going to re replicate it, and then eventually you developed a style, or was it... You did it kind of the old fashioned way. I'm going to get a bunch of books. I'm going to study, go to museums, take notes. Which way did you learn how to draw and build up your style? Uh, it was all from from sight. I didn't start out <laughs> too good. My my start out was Spider Man with the bubble muscles. So it was nothing but a bunch of circles and lines inside of the circles. But somewhere along the way, I said, okay. Yes, my peers around me find me amazing, but I can be better. In which Auntie started taking me to the comic book store and I saw how Spider-Man was actually supposed to look. And I would study by sight just by looking. Like till this day, I like I'll see a pair of sneakers and go, I like the lining and the form in that sneaker and it's all just detail for me. So by watching movies and reading comic books and seeing other people draw like the form of their hands, I would study it. And it, it didn't, not, not too much of it came from books. I wasn't really that big of a book. Even with the comic books, I'd rarely read them. It was all the looking at the graphics and seeing what the artist put into it. So yeah, that's that's how I built, and that's how I continue to build. To this day, I 
I, I read everything. Like, I, I may be sitting in the back, but I'm the one paying the most attention. Hmm. And take a note that you mostly kind of visualize other people's work. And then what I guess I'm trying to say is, would you feel like you're still possibly in a stage where you're kind of replicating someone other else's work if you, or if you develop your own style at this point? I... No artist is quite comfortable with themselves. Like any anybody in the, in the art world would tell you that. Even as a writer, you're never a hundred percent satisfied with your work. Maybe ninety nine, but never a hundred. And I'm comfortable with. I would say that I have a style that I'm comfortable with, but I'm still building because I feel like greatness doesn't have a limit. I feel like I could go further. And that's what keeps me pushing, just knowing that I can get better and better. And day by day, every day, I'll jot out an idea. A little bit of practice every day takes you further than you think. And I tell people, like, they ask me, how did you become such a great artist? Practice. Practice, there may not be a perfect, but practice damn sure gets you nearer to perfect (laughs) if there is out there. So, yeah. Now, taking note that back in the day, your aunt was buying you supplies, and now I'm sh- I'm sure you're buying your own. Yeah. How do you how do you make it so that you actually make money off art? Because as I'm sure you've seen, when it comes to Instagram, Google, Tumblr, all these other places, there's a lot of opportunities for people to just steal your art and claim it. So how do you monetize it? How do you get it out there without having people steal it and basically take away any type of money that would recoup not only your cost for supplies, but, you know, help you build your brand up? Well, first thing, I I see on social media a lot, a lot of art is stolen. So the first go-to is to watermark your pictures with your your hashtag or your ad name for whatever social purposes. And, um... The thing you have to do, you like, like you said, you have to have your own style. You have to, you have to have something that somebody can't copy. It's easy to keep it simple, but it's hard to copy detail. So, a lot of the time, like when I'm dealing with customers and I know they're a little iffy, I never send a straight picture of whatever I'm working on. I always get an angle. Because who wants to, if, if you're going to steal my artwork, you're going to get Vegeta in the background here. Who wants just the corner of his head? You got to be smart with working with this the, the art scene because it's a lot of iffy people. Mm-hmm. And following up on that, how do you monetize then with all these iffy people? Like, for example, you did the logo for my website. And I guess since I'm trustworthy, you didn't have to do that whole cutout thing. (laughs) So how do you make money off of this? Is it mostly through doing commissions like you did for me? Is it through selling advertising on Instagram and hoping people hit you up on that? You have a website. Is it going through there? Like, There's so many ways to make money as an artist, but the question is, what is the best way and how? My best way has been Instagram over the past six or so years because it reaches out to people that I can't reach in my normal life. I've had people from Saudi Arabia, from California, from Hawaii, from LA, just all over the world because Instagram helps me reach out to people that I couldn't have possibly done right here in New Jersey. I get more support from random people all over the world than I do from than I interact with every day so I would say Instagram is definitely my best insight to selling artwork and I do also have the site the site is going pretty well it's a little slow but it's going you know it take it takes a build up um art shows is another way to sell I haven't sold too many at art shows, but I have gotten rid of a few big pieces. It's it's all about big work to me. So people want to see things they haven't seen before that are different. Everyone claims they're different, but are doing the same shit. <laughs> and kind of following up on that, do you believe people even need websites anymore with stuff like Instagram and the picture? 
was having a website just good for like the storefront purposes? Having a website is good for storefront purposes because with all the, the apps and stuff that we have today, Cash App, Venmo, like even with Snapchat, you're able to send money. It's like the 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 site is just for you know visual purposes, more of a professional view because you know you you gotta keep your professionalism in there. Okay, and sort of looking ahead right now. And I'm speaking from going to one of your art shows. A lot of your work is kind of standalone. Like I'll see one thing of Batman, but it's not going to really relate to another thing of Batman. Or if I see Vegeta, it's not going to be like a series, like part one, two, three, etc. Is there any type of inspiration or maybe scheduling of possibly going into, even though you're not much for reading comic books, but perhaps making comic books, a manga, or even taking it to the next level and possibly making anime or cartoons? I do have characters in the work for anime and actual Americanized animation. They've been in the works for years, but I keep them on the low because like, I'm trying to perfect them. But right now I'm trying to focus on my main revenue of just the many outcomes that I have, painting, drawing with markers, sneaker art. I'm trying to get that out of the work first and make something of my name before I actually do build upon that. Because if I do get into to cartooning and anime, I want to actually study it and read up and educate myself on pieces and, and how to do certain things and I feel that takes time. So further down the line, I will build into that. So trust and believe it is in the works. There are some dope characters that are sitting on some paper in this crazy, crazy head of mine. But it, it, it will be done soon, but just not for the time being. And just for a preview, what kind of characters are you writing about? Is it going to be kind of like what you see in the background, some crazy kind of action hero or... Yes, it's one character that I'll give you a little insight into. She's more of a cartoonized anime, I guess a mix. And she's a a, a young Latina woman around 18, 19. And she has the powers of the creatures that she grew up around because she was uh, raised in the safari. That wouldn't be anything related to some of the stuff I saw at your art, art gallery, would it? Because I remember there was about two Latinas in the art. Well, you know, I love my Spanish woman. I... <laughs> <laughs> that's my, that's, that's my, my, my poison and my, my antidote. But um, it's more cartoonized from what I'm working on. Okay. Um, final five questions. <laughs> Who or what inspires you to continue? My grandmother and my father. My grandmother, like I said, was in the, the fashion scene quite heavily. And my great-grandmother. And just seeing how far they did go with it, because it's, it's got my grandmother that good, that good, good money to this day. And it helped her build with her talent and my father simply because he's he's been my, my role model and my idol all throughout my life, being such a humble man who's fought for everything that he's wanted, especially, you know, even having the same problems as me with the diabetes, but still being able to build and be a strong individual. And also, my, my kids from camp. I work with diabetic kids every summer. And over the years, I've watched these kids grow and just into young adults. And some of them I'm even working with now. And for them to say they would see me building on my passion as a counselor, late nights I'd be drawing. They'd be like, Dean, I want to be like you one day. And I have a few that are actually young artists. So those are my, my, my inspirations of why I keep going. Okay. And considering the kids you work with, what do you feel like, oh, that no, totally different question. We'll come back to that, though. Do you feel like in your field you have started to gain ground and gotten comfortable? 
Oh, well, being on the art scene, stepping out on an art museums more within the past two years with the, the whole painting thing going on and just putting my artwork more out there because I was very secluded as a child. And being secluded as a child is why I'm such a great artist because all my time went into drawing. Didn't have many friends. Didn't spend much time with family. But um, what was the question? <laughs> the question was, do you feel like you started to gain ground and get comfortable in your art? Uh, yeah, being being putting my stuff more out there, stepping into the art scene, like I said, has definitely taken me out of my comfort zone. And it's taught me to communicate with people more, to be more social. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm already a goofy individual, but to know that I can make people laugh and listen with my artwork with their eyes have you ever seen somebody listen with their eyes like that the feeling is amazing when i see somebody looking at my work it makes me want to step out more like i can do this and only i can do this and now backtracking to what we was going to ask a second ago mm -hmm. like you are helping kids during what's the name of the camp camp najetta is that like open to everybody where is the camp only diabetic kids, juvenile diabetics. It's in Stillwater, New Jersey. It's in the middle of the woods, yeah. <laughs> Black people in the woods, okay. <laughs> hey, look, my mother, at the age of five, at the age of, no, I was around 12, 13, when our doctor told us about the camp. And I went and my mother dropped me off. She was like, you're going to have to stay here for two weeks. That's why I packed all your stuff. I was like, Ma, we we black. Why, why you got me staying out in the woods with all these white people? <laughs> Not what? A day into it, I was like, yo, I love this place. Like, these are some genuine people. They're helping me better myself, get better control of my health. And I'm having fun. And to see how you could do that. As I got older, somebody brought me back into it, and I was like, yo, I'd love to have this job. And that was actually one of my first jobs. And to this day, I love it, working with those kids. And taking over the kids, what are some of the things you would tell them if they really do decide to pursue like a career in art, that what they must do and what they must avoid? You must stay true to yourself. Only you can do what you do. Only you can create the line specifically as you do. You must go with the flow. Don't ever let anybody push you off your path because it's going to get hard. You're going to get frustrated. Trust me, you're going to get frustrated. That's a part of the package that comes with being any kind of artist. But what I would tell them to avoid is top-notch the shady people that you will come across whether it's people claiming to be friends, family, business partners, they're going to be people that try to bullshit you out of your money, out of your supplies, even out of your own talent. There will, people, there will be people that try and steal your style. You must curate on that style as much as possible. Like I said, positivity is your main go-to. If you need to take a break to clear your mind, do that. But don't let negativity take you over. It's like believing the Lord over the devil. Okay? It's going to get dark sometimes, but you got to see where that light is coming from. Okay. Get deep with it. Huh. Now, as of where you are now, where do you see room for growth? Room for growth? Um, I would say my realism and my paintings and drawings, um, uh, caricatures, I'm, I'm quite getting better. And last but not least, I would say my, my uh, portraits. Because although as an artist, I can draw myself like it's nothing, which you should be able to do first as an artist, but other people I'm building on. And over the years, I've struggled with it, but I don't give up. I've had people tell me, yo, that looks exactly like you. But I may think, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. And and with my work, I have to be comfortable. I don't I don't give a damn how comfortable you are with my work. I got to be sure that it's top-notch work. 
So I would say, yeah, the the realism, the caricatures, and the portraits. Okay, and last question, though, I'm going to ask you about something that I saw on your Instagram a few weeks ago. In the long run, what do you want your legacy to be? I want to know that I inspired at least one person. Like, Like, so heavily and deeply that they become even bigger than what I plan on being. Which is pretty damn big, you know. I'm not trying to talk myself up, but you know, I'm I'm the shit at this. Point. But um, I wanna I wanna inspire somebody and to the point where they're so happy with what they do that they make it their passion. And although I've done that with a few people, I wanted to go far beyond imagination. Okay, now I need some background on this picture that you had with Charlemagne the God. Break that down. How did that come about? So, like I said, you got to take opportunities for what they are. And one opportunity that I took recently, in which I got that picture, my friend Queen of Bergen, also my manager, she hit me up. She was like, Dean, I have two tickets to a movie premiere that's being hosted by Charlemagne the God. And she is one of his top notch fans. She even calls him Uncle Charla. She, she worked for an app developing company in which she met him one time and they talked about business inquiries and whatnot. And she worked for a company called Fueled and that was her first experience. Well, the second was when we actually went to the movie premiere and we were waiting for him while waiting for the movie to start and he popped in the movie theater and Queena got so nervous that she just didn't want to move. And I was like, well, girl, he's just another human being. Let's let's go. And I wasn't going without her because she she's the talker out of both of us, especially being the manager. And Quinna just know how to she know how to talk like business all 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 around. So he walks out. We miss our opportunity. And I'm talking to her like, yo, Quinna, like, what was that? We, we I did all this artwork. Let's 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 go see what we could do. And she was like, nah, nah. So a couple minutes go past and I go, I got to use the bathroom. She goes, I got to use the bathroom too. So we both go to the bathroom. And as we walk out, he's sitting right there with a security guard. And I'm like, oh, no, we about to do this. So we whip out the picture that she had me create the night before. She was like, Dean Bean, I want to see what you could do with your hands. I was like, but less than 24 hours? All right, I'll take a challenge. Let's go. Now, his favorite, I know he's really into Marvel and Wolverine. He even has them tattooed on his shoulder. So I drew a picture with him and his infamous stance with Wolverine behind him and some of his favorite colors. And I handed him the picture. He was like, yo, this is really amazing. Like, you a young art guard. I was like, well, I wouldn't take it as that, but thank you. And we took some pictures, and a Charlemagne's manager actually took down all my information, and they reposted the picture. And when it, within, I want to say, three hours of reposting the picture, I got over 800 followers and thousands of likes. And I was like, damn, I ain't never had this type of like reaction to my artwork before, because I'm getting one, 200 likes on Instagram. Well, I think that Charlemagne picture got 19,000 likes. Yeah, that was my reaction. Mind you, I came home from that movie premiere and took a nap. And I woke up to my phone, ding, 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 ding. And like, it was it was amazing. And I was like, wow. So to, to be an artist in today's society, it's nothing but simple. Knowing the right people and having the right insight and... It's hashtags and, you know, just angles on your pictures, good photography. So it's a lot to it, but it's a lot different from what it was back in the day, you know, just stepping out on the street or going to an art store and somebody recognizing you and going, oh, well, this is amazing. It's a lot more you have to do, but it's also a lot of clout being a lot to being an artist today because some people just do it for the shine, for the fame. I do it because I'm passionate about it. It's what I love. It's what I'm going to do to the day that I die. Trust me, I've I've tried to stop a few times and I've gotten so frustrated when I go, 
man, I'm doing this shit no more. I ain't, I'm not doing this. I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna be a basketball player. I'm a play, be a tennis player. Trust me, with with within two minutes of me picking up a basketball, I go okay. Let me go get my pencil back. Cause this this some bullshit. I uh, I can't breathe. I can't. <laughs> so it's it's been times when I've tried to stop, but it's literally. I'm so far in it, it's impossible for me to stop because my hands have a mind of their own at this point. So, yeah. That was the story with Charlemagne. <laughs> All right, just to wrap up, let's go over how people can find you. There is, of course, hashtag draw cool shit on Instagram. Yes. It is, is it E Sneak Cloud or E Sneak Cloud? It is Sneak underscore e cloud that is my insta and my twitter is sneak sneaky cloud and the website is sneakdesigns.com in which i sell prints paintings stickers and clothing is actually in the making which i believe we saw something with queena she had your logo on the back of her vest i think it was or jacket yeah, she she had me make her own personalized logo with her face and where she's got the bright smile. And even I have stuff in the making, like just yesterday, I went and got this printed. Oh, snap. I say, if you can't, if you can't create it yourself, then don't wear it. I, I'm tired of paying over prices for clothing that just says Supreme across the middle. I want some detail. I want some dopeness. I don't want just no hype beast. I, I want I want some personalized stuff, some cool stuff. And I know we're kind of at the end, and this is kind of a big question, but how do you even get into the process of mass making things like prints and all that? There's a lot of work behind it, including copywriting your work and all of that. But it's, like I said, it's, it's nothing but research. If you want to get into it, you got to learn about it. You got to personally experience it like with the t-shirts right now we've been looking around for uh supplies for t-shirts we've been looking around for press prints to get the t-shirts done uh we've already started copywriting my work it's 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 a lot but in the end it's going to be worth it like they say you gotta give money to make money and that's what i'm doing and what's the eta on that being available to the public uh, within, I would say by December, we should at least be dropping sweatshirts and crew necks, possibly sweatpants. And all will be found on the website, right? Yes. And that reminds me, one last thing. Is there like a subscription on the website so that people can get updates or what's the best way? Instagram, Twitter, or the website for updates? I would say the best place for updates is Instagram because I'm constantly on Instagram. Communicating with my other artists, finding inspiration, and just being a goofball on my Instagram. (laughs) Well, of course, I thank you for your time, Mr. Nelson. And of course, as somebody who's bought your work, I'm definitely looking forward to what's to come. Thank you, by the way, and you shall see greatness along the way. It's expected, and I know it's going to (laughs) exist. Thank you. All right. Thank you once more, sir, and have a good day. You too.